I think it's a natural question is, uh, why explore space? And some people have, uh, different people have different views on this. Personally, to my way of thinking, a uh, part of human nature is to reach out and explore. The fact of the matter is, if man stops really stretching himself and extending himself and looking, looking out, then I think that's when civilization will begin to decline. Uh, man just has that inquisitive nature, and it's got to be satisfied. Uh, we're uh, right on the threshold of uh, really a brand new opportunity uh, to explore the uh, solar system and the universe and to increase the value of benefits back here on home. Our space lab itself, as it uh, is presently conceived, will provide us with a, a capability which grows on Skylab, expands on Skylab, and provides us with an enormous capability to conduct research in space. And of course, space exploration provides this, uh, this spiritual quality. It allows you to, uh, to go to the unknown and find what's there, and uh, hopefully by doing so, you're going to improve your lot, prove your lot, prove your lot, prove your lot, prove your lot. To have a guy there to change film, to change programs, to repoint the thing, to fix it when it breaks, to take it out and put a new one in, uh, is in many cases not only uh, the, the rewarding thing to do, but it's the cheap thing to do. 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 Thing to do. First, uh, we've explored the moon, and we've now gone to explore near space, and finally, uh, we're going to explore the solar system. All of this, uh, man plays an integral part. If our children and our children's children are going to enjoy the same quality of life here on Earth as we have enjoyed in the past, we're going to have to learn how to find new resources and how to manage the ones that we have more efficiently and more effectively. Of course, Apollo went on to uh, take us to the moon, but it also left us with a tremendous technology to look towards the future. And as far as Skylab is concerned, it represents a definite turning point. May 14th, 1973, a working laboratory, man's first home in space, on its way to Earth orbit, there to be occupied by three teams of astronauts in three record-breaking missions. Over the next several months, a lot of theory would become over the next several months. A lot of theory would become over the next several months. A lot of theory would become over the next several months. A lot of theory would become. Headshot. Over the next several facts and give rise to new theory about man, about Earth, about the physical universe. But on this day, a sequence of events began to cast doubt on even a first mission. Of course, as soon as we could listen in on the flight director net, we realized something had happened to the lab, even though it looked like a perfect launch from where we had been observing it. The meteoroid shield was launched about 60 seconds into the flight, and with the meteoroid shield launched, gave us the problem of overheating in the workshop, so many different ideas in the intervening 10 days were put out as different means of being able to rig a
temporary heat shield or a permanent heat shield which would allow us to salvage the vehicle. Of course, all the NASA centers were working on it, all our contractors were working on it, and taking an active part in discussions and the decisions that were made as to what's wrong with the workshop and how we're going to fix it. We went to Marshall to work in the water tank with the proposed fixes. Talk to the engineers we're working on it. Talk to the flight. Damn, pilots. son. We discussed it, of course, with management. And uh, we actually launched on the 25th of May with three potential ways of covering the workshop to shade it from the sun. About seven and a half hours after liftoff, as we were. rendezvousing with the workshop, the extent of the damage became apparent to us very rapidly. We first confirmed that the one solar wing had completely left the vehicle and was no longer around. We could see the damaged wires at the hinge line. And of course, all the gold foil, uh, which normally would have been underneath the heat shield and meteoroid shield, was uh, exposed to the sunlight. And it had darkened on the sun side considerably. Then as we got around to the side where the jammed solar wing was, it became immediately obvious to us that this little tiny metal strap that had 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 torn off the heat shield and meteoroid shield had jammed the solar wing. Well, the advantages which manned spaceflight offers are in the area of repair and maintenance, which we've demonstrated uh, time and time again on Skylab. As a matter of fact, the whole Skylab series of flights would have been a failure had it not been for the ability of the first crew to repair the space station. Pete and I went down into the workshop, installed the canister that contained the parasol in the scientific airlock. Joe was observing the deployment of the parasol from the command module. I couldn't see the airlock itself. Smoke but, uh, weed every day. I could see this funny looking orange thing all rolled up and skinny. Smoke and, uh, weed every day. Out of there. And then Pete said, OK, we're going to let her go. And it Smoke just started weed to every unfold day. and did a lot of flopping. And it kind of settled halfway folded and halfway unfolded. We deployed it as best we could, uh, pulled it back down. It was about a foot off. And, uh, and that was it. it. It worked quite well for the rest of the mission. I think on about day four or five, we, we definitely knew that it was no longer an uncomfortable environment. It was warm, but certainly nothing that you couldn't put up with. Of course, not having gotten the swing out on our first attempt when we came up there, we really had about uh, half of the electrical capability that we should have had. Smoke so weed it was every very, day. very important to attempt to get that jam solar panel out. I think we probably wouldn't have had any Skylab missions had it not been for the fact that man was able to get to the Skylab and to make it habitable and to repair it in such a way that all of the missions were completely successful. So uh, Joe tried and then we decided to tighten it up again and I'd try and I got under it and Boy, it broke. It, it let go in one big hurry, and there I was, launched into space again, free-floating, hanging on the end of this string. And, well, by the time I got straightened out again and looked around, why, there it was, out and deployed. Thus, very early, man's presence proved to be vital. It would be so in the missions that followed. At the proper time. But uh, in areas where you need man's flexibility and his initiative, for instance, uh, in the deployment of the solar on the first manned mission and on the deployment of the sail that we used to shade for our shade of the solar show on the second mission. And on our mission where we had to resurface the
smoke weed every day. We did our medical stuff primarily before flight and then after flight was that we were going to fly much longer than we ever had before. Uh, we were going to quadruple the amount of time spent by a human being in space from 14 days to 56 days. And as it turned out, we did better than that, 184 days on the third flight. <laughs> And on our mission, where we had to resurface the coolant system, 